values they upheld these are five panchakanyas the divine goddesses ahalya draupadi sita tara and mandodari contemplating on whom all sins are destroyed however big they might be some scholars even go further to say not only they remove the sins they will also prevent you from committing a sin going forward by inspiring you to study the values they upheld you will also be inspired to walk that line so this is a very very wonderful concept that we have to remember these great women for what they stood and what they taught their strength their courage their resolve their conviction their righteousness and steadfast loyalty to what they truly believed is not only good for them but for the greater good of this world so today we have taken one of the great divine forums mother sita and we are going to study by taking few incidences there are so many i cannot go through all of them but just enough to kind of give you an idea as to what we are talking about mother sita is the daughter of bhudevi mother earth brought up by king janaka she is the queen of bhagavan shri ramachandra ji this is an epic titled shrimad ramayana before the name rama comes sita's name appears shri means sita it is a sita's story and ramayana is rama deriving the strength to live a life of dharma with unconditional love and support provided by mother sita all through his life this epic or itihasa is composed by adi kavi very first poet maharshi valmiki the brihad bhagavata amrita states what itihasa is it is ಧರ್ಮಾರ್ಥ ಕಾಮಮೋಕ್ಷಾಂ ಉಪದೇಶ ಸಮನ್ವಿತ ಪೂರ್ವವೃತ್ತ ಕಥಾಯುಕ್ತ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ಪ್ರಚಕ್ಷತೆ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಂಡ್ ದಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ದಟ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಂಡ್ ಪೂರ್ವವೃತ್ತ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಂಡ್ ಕಥಾಯುಕ್ತ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ written in the form of a story in the form of a poetry and what it does one is it entertains us manoranjana it's beautiful to sit and listen to the story we all become young children when somebody tells us the story it impresses us because we actually feel that we are that character going through whatever that character is going through and it is also jeevotkarsham upliftment of the human soul to elevate itself into the deeper level of consciousness to know and to discriminate how to live in our life and gain strength in light of numerous retellings of ramayana a study of the original ramayana is very essential which is written by valmiki in 24000 verses in the language sanskrit which is beautiful to sing as rama's children lava and kusha sang and made this very popular because valmiki's ramayana gives a refreshingly different perspective about many aspects of the story and the characters 
Valmiki's presentation offers a clear picture and provides illuminating perspectives about the status and influence of women. Valmiki's Sita is not a weak lady who just went along with whatever her partner asked her to do. Rather, she stood and she knew what was right. And she stood fast and steadfast. Dhriti, her dhriti and firm resolve is something we are going to see in and through the incidents that we are going to study today. So we shall now say a few things in praise of Mother Sita before going into some of the incidences. Swami Vivekananda says, Sita is the name for everything that is good, pure and holy. Mother Sita is the Bharatatma. She is the soul of our nation, Bharata. Sita is unique, he says. There may have been several Ramas, perhaps, but never more than one Sita. Vivekananda further says, Mother Sita, to say that she is pure is blasphemy because she is purity itself embodied. The most beautiful character that ever lived on earth. Tulasi Das Ji says, Samsaramaya Bheshajam Samudram Shri Janaki Jeevanam. Her story is so purifying and so holy, it is the correct medicine for this worldly diseases of this materialistic comforts and luxuries that we always think is going to be real. And what happens, just like a sick man seeks to take a medicine to gain his health back, and he also has to have some water in order to digest the medicine or the tablet that he is taking. He says, Sita's story is that medicine, and Rama's katha is that water, which is the nectar. So we have the Amrita of Rama's story, which is the nectar. Sita's story, which is the medicine, which not just creates health in the body, but it helps you to transcend beyond and above to live a good and a purified, contented, fulfilled life. That is the holy story of Mother Sita. It is touching, makes you cry many times, makes you think that her partner is harsh towards her. If we do not understand the underpinnings of the story in totality. It's not enough to even study Valmiki's Ramayana with the translation in English from Sanskrit. That only gives the superficial understanding of these beautiful characters. One has to seek and take shelter with the commentators. How the commentators have looked, the scholarship of these commentators to bring out everything, the very essence of each of these verses, and then tell us about what must be going on, what seemingly looks so harsh, what seemingly looks so meek, what seemingly looks so weak, is highlighted with the commentator's energy of understanding, which gives the insight into the whole story. So it is extremely purifying. Valmiki says, it is Sita's Ayana. Ayana means journey. It is indeed Sita's journey, Sita's life. Sita yaha charitam mahat. It is the glory of Mother Sita. Can you imagine the six books, the six cantos of Ramayana without Sita in it? In every canto, whether you take the Balakanda, which has Rama and Sita's marriage, Ayodhya Kanda, where Sita makes a fine resolve to go with Rama to the forest for 14 years, 
or Aranya Kanda, where Sita is abducted by Ravana, or Kishkinda Kanda, where the search for Sita begins, and Sundara Kanda, where Sita is found by Hanumanji, and Yuddha Kanda, where Sita is reunited after the killing of evil Ravana with Rama, and they happily go back to Ayodhya to be crowned as king and queen. This is the story we are going to present today. Because without Sita, there is no Ramayana. She is the feminine energy, Prakriti, who moves the story forward and gives us the ability to think intelligently and incorporate the values into our life. When not we are happy, when we are faced with adversities in our life, and when we are afflicted by the difficulties involved in our life, how she remained unruffled in and through, and how her resolve made her put character before beauty, before wealth, before name, before fame. That was the integrity that Sita possessed. Character first. Everything else can be sacrificed. Her life is one of sacrificing what is not important. So, withstanding all the adversities in her life, she stands so tall and her story is inspiring. And her story is purifying. Her story is beautiful. So, we quickly move to the Ayodhya Kanda, where you are going to see the strength of Sita, because Balakanda is her growing up in Janaka's palace, attended to with lot of love by Sunayana, her mother, and Janaka, her stepfather, and learning all the archery and the righteousness of what a warrior princess should learn about. She was not just a woman who was young and beautiful and who just got married and who was asked to marry somebody. No, she chose who she was going to marry. Right from there, she is telling us how she has appreciated Rama's valor in breaking the bow. And when Rama said, I want to wait until my father gives the approval to marry this girl, until then I am not going to say yes to this marriage. My job was to break the Shiva's bow, but marriage has never been in my cup of tea, then everybody is surprised. What is this? Such a beautiful girl that she is. Thousands and thousands of kings have come from all over the world and have tried to seek her in marriage. And here Rama is saying, I don't want to marry until my father approves of this marriage. And Sita says, this is what I like in him. Because one, he knows when to speak, how much to speak, what to speak. He spoke when, when the marriage proposal came from Janaka Maharaja. He said, no. How much to speak? I want to wait for my father's approval. How nicely to speak? I did not know that this was an event of marriage. So I request you to please send message to my father. Only after his approval, I will marry. Sita, how can you not appreciate someone of that stature? And secondly, the sense control. He was Jitendriya. If he was lusty, he would immediately say, yes, I want to marry, I want to possess her. So many people wanted to marry her, but now it is my turn. Oh, let me enjoy. None of that. He had tremendous sense control. He said, all can wait, which was appreciated by Sita. Said, ha, ah, this is the right man. The bow breaking and all, the bow has been in our kingdom for so many generations. Even I could lift the bow. The bow breaking, maybe it was an old bow, used bow. So, nothing great about breaking the bow. But the other two aspects that Rama exhibited is very pleasing to me. And she chose to marry him. 
because of the qualities of Rama. So I am just beginning to tell you the character and the transcendental personality of Sita right in the beginning. Then they live very happily for 12 years in Ayodhya, enjoying the comforts of mothers-in-law's love and affection, father-in-law's tender care, and Rama's adoration and love because she was chosen by her father. He starts to love her twice. And Sita's love increases gradually and her adoration for Rama, the partnership of love and harmony is unmatched. It's parallel is nothing to see, immeasurable. Then comes Kaikeyi's demands. What is it? She demands that Bharata to be crowned and Rama to be sent to the exile for 14 years. When Rama hears this from his stepmother Kaikeyi, he is least disturbed. He remains unagitated, unafflicted. He says, oh, that is all. Father could have told me this. I would have said, yes, why is he sad? After all, he is sending me to another kingdom to take care of the forest. The forest also needs protection. So I am just so happy that this has come to me where I have an opportunity to see so many sages and gain insight and have satsang. So he comes and informs Kausalya, his mother, and consoles her because she is very sad that Rama is going to live for 14 years. She says, Matru Devo Bhava, whatever happened to the Vedic mandate, you have to follow me. I am telling you not to go. I don't care what my husband said. Pitru Deva comes after Matru Devo Bhava. And Rama says very beautifully, Amma, if you had told me to stay here earlier, I would have done that. But see, who told me first to go to the forest? Father. So I have to follow. And you also have to follow because he is not just your husband. He is the king of the kingdom. So you have to follow. So he convinces her on the right way, dharmic way. Not, oh, don't worry, I am going. I'll be back. None of that. Everything standing on the values. Then he comes to the inner chambers, to the palace, and looking kind of sad because he has to break this news to his dear beloved Sita. It was different with Kausalya. But who will be there to take care of Sita? She has to be left alone. So he keeps his head down and he's looking down at his feet and Sita is exuberantly looking and she is enjoying the, all the preparations for the next morning. Imagine this whole thing happened overnight. Everything changed overnight in 20 hours. And Sita has no clue about it. And she is getting ready and she is waiting for Rama to come and enjoy the pleasure of the fasting and satsang and charity, everything. There's so much to do the previous night. They cannot eat anything. They have to take care of the worship of their Ranganatha, which is the family deity. So she's getting ready for all that. And here he comes with a pale face. And she asks, why, Rama, on a time where you have to be so happy, why are you so sad? Rama says, I have been asked my father and my stepmother to go to forest on exile for 14 years. Uh, Sita, I think you should stay here and take care of your mother, Sindla, and everybody. She says, what are you talking? Your words are laughable. How can I stay here? Because she is ready to go. She assumes that she is going. And she is not bitter about Kaikeyi, bitter about Dasharatha, nothing at all. She says, okay, fine, let's go. When are we leaving? What can I pack? What do you think I should take to the forest? This is wonderful. You could not have given me the best news. Thank you. Let's go. And Rama says, no, Sita, you have to stay here because forest is not for young princes like you. Let me go. This is, after all, what I have been asked to do. And why are you going to come? So Sita says, I don't think you understand dharma. Look at the courage, the outspoken nature of Sita. She prevails at the end of this 
conversation. She counters him. How on earth can you talk like this? You are talking to me like somebody out the, on the street that you married. So you can leave her unprotected. It is your duty to protect me. What do you think you are trying to do? It is unfair. You cannot do that. Do you know what my parents have told me? Mother may be there. Father may be there. Brother may be there. Sister may be there. But there is only one person who is called a husband. Your duty is to take care of me. Just like I am loyal to you, you better show your loyalty to me. And it's beautifully sung with the Yagaraja's composition. I'll just give a little piece of this. Mm, much better. No, no, less one. Yes. Talli tandrulu anna tambulu unna Polati ki vokadu puru shudu unna says mother is there father is there brother is there but they are all many you are the only one so don't even try to wing out of this just because you can articulate it is not like the time you married me when you said Dasharatha has to come here there is nobody we need to discuss it is just between you and me let me get you straight don't say this and he says no, you being a daughter-in-law, you must listen to your mother-in-law, take care of her, this is your duty. Why do you think you have come as a daughter-in-law? Sita laughs and counters him again. Don't try to teach me how to live. My parents have taught me everything, how to live, how to act in different times and how to stand up for what I believe in, which is the right thing. And Purandara Dasa has sung a beautiful song in this, giving advice to the daughter by the mother when daughter goes to her husband's house. Buddhi matu heli dare kelabe kamma magale mana shuddha lagi ganda nodane baala be kamma atte maava ganji kondu nadaya be kamma magale chitta dollabhana kare For this, Buddhi Matu Heli Dare Kele Bekamma. Oh, my daughter, we are sending you to your husband's house. We are giving you some words of advice. Please listen to this advice. Mana Shuddha Lagi, with the purity of heart and your soul, Ganda Nodane, 
ವಿತ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಬಾಳಬೇಕಮ್ಮ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಲಿವ್ ಬೈ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಸೋ ದಟ್ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಡಿಯರ್ ಟು ಯು ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಗಿವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ this is what my mother has told me not just that like you don't even know my mother also has told me atte maava ganjikondu nadeyabekamma be respectful of your mother in law and father in law see i am already knowing it you don't have to teach me chitta dollabha nakkare nu chitta means the one who has stolen the heart who has stolen the heart of sita rama has stolen the heart chitta dollaba nakkareyannu you have to gain his affection by doing all this by behaving properly and then that's not just important something more that you have to know hotto hottige timely timely housework you have to do maneya kelasa just because you are going as an young princess don't think that you can just sit on a chair and get people to attend to you no you have to be the servant to show how to be respectfully doing your work carry on your work and hattu mandi oppuva hage nadeyabekamma then you must be appreciated by all around you just looking at oh my god this princess has come yet she is so beautiful she knows everything what an upbringing what makes you happy when your husband appreciates your parents because then you know he has value for your upbringing and he is giving you compliments that is how you should live see rama how they have taught me now she says i have told you everything i have to say now there is nothing you can say to me that will stop me from going with you so just take me okay and i am coming chapter closed rama says no sita you do not understand you are not made for this kind of difficulty why don't you understand she says how many times do i have to tell you okay now you cannot protect me right i will go ahead of you agrata sthe gamishyami let me go in front of you clear the road for you take away the thorns and tall standing grass and make sure the road is clean for you so your lotus feet can be slowly taken into the place where i do all this i will promise you i will live like a yogini i will observe austerity i will not bother you for anything i won't ask you for anything i will eat whatever you eat whenever you eat and however whenever it is available supposing it is not available no problem i will also stay hungry but it's not hunger for me because you are with me just looking at you purna chandrana nibhananam your face is just like that full moon just looking at it it's nectar moon is supposed to store nectar just by looking at you i am so satisfied who wants food when i have you oh rama please understand you can't stop me okay stubborn rama still says mm mm oh bahu dukha karam ayyo this is very difficult this is very sad you don't understand the beasts are there tigers are there elephants are there wolves are there jackals are there you don't know when they come and pounce upon you what can i do he says so you're not taking me right you're trying to tell me and make a debate out of this issue which should not have been spent this much time for okay i am going to die i'm going to commit suicide by one of the three ways either i'll jump into the fire or i will take poison or i will drown myself in the water which one do you want me to do still he says no then what can she do then she said i should have known i feel pity for my father what was he thinking mithila dipa and he is the king of this mithila desha known by videha janaka raja <laughs> he got you tvam jamataram prapya you as a son in law who is a striyam who is nothing just like me a woman but purusha vigraham in the guise of a man i feel sorry for my father what was he thinking he has gotten you a woman for a husband this is a pity i don't understand this 
then Rama is insulted so badly and her counter is so strong. What could he do? He says, Janaki, please don't do this. I agree to take you. I just wanted to know your opinion, that is all. Because I didn't want to take you without knowing how you felt. Because I didn't want to force you to the forest life. Now that I know your steadfastness in it, your resolve in it, and your understanding of the fact that you should be my shadow. How can sun be bereft of sun's radiance? You are that radiance, I am that sun. I am the world, you are the meaning. I am the moon, you are the light. I think you are born only to be with me in the forest. Okay? So please, na devi tava dukkhena swargam api abhirochaye I don't even want the heaven because even the heavenly life is not luxurious for me when you are sad. O oh, Devi, he embraces Sita and then he says, you have said such an apt thing which is so suitable for my race and your race. You have brought great prestige to your dynasty and my dynasty. Now let's get ready. Now give away everything that we are not going to take anything. We are just going to go with clothes, just what we are wearing and we are going. So you don't have to take anything. Give charity to all the mendicants, give the food and all the jewelry and the saris to all the Brahmins. The entire citizens of Ayodhya should be happy with all the things that we can give. See a householder's duty. Sita is saying here and showing by doing it how charity is highlighted. Every time we say give charity, give charity, give charity. Why? Because by giving charity, we are receiving countless blessings from the Lord. And we should always be given like that with utmost love in our heart. So this is Sita teaching not only her counter and how she chose the life of simplicity and austerity when something was handed to her. Sage Vasishta, the preceptor says, let Sita be the queen. Why? Only Rama has been asked to go to the forest. Sita has not been asked. I am going to make Sita the queen and she is going to reign as the queen of the kingdom in the absence of Rama. But Sita refuses that. She gives up the place of queenhood in order to be with her husband. This life of simplicity she chooses. She did not choose luxury of the palace life. Just think about it. Just count the number of things we are talking about, Sita. Now they journey into the forest. The first thing they come is the shore of Ganga River and they have to cross the river of Ganga. The ferryman helps them to cross and this scene tells us how religious and how spiritual Sita Mata is because she takes the water in her hands and then she offers it to Ganga and asks Ganga Mata to bless her so that her husband, herself and Lakshmana can come back safely after 14 years of exile and she takes an oath. See, taking oath was there in the time of Ramayana also. Now mostly it is done by women for the better of the family. Oh, my daughter should get married. I will do 40 days of Katyayani Puja. My husband has to get better, so I will do this puja. Normally, women take care of these things. Here, what Sita is telling us, this is exactly what she is telling us. She takes a oath and she says, if I can come back safe after 14 years of exile, Amma, I am going to come back and pray to you. I will give in charity thousands of cows. During those times, cows was the wealth, not money. Cows were considered wealth. I will give you thousands of cows to the Brahmins and food and everything. Amma, please bless me. And this is a beautiful song. Let us just sing this one. <laughs> Na 
जय जय गंगे भागीरथी The journey continues, and of course, Rama describes the scenery, beautiful wind bringing the fragrance of the flowers, jasmine, champaka, all kinds of flowers. He shows the jack trees with jack fruits, mango trees with mango fruits, banana plants with banana, and then the little streams, pure water, and Sita is in heaven enjoying. And Rama even says, with you next to me, I don't want anything else. It is so beautiful to live in this forest and enjoy the bliss. Then, of course, the journey continues deeper and deeper. They are getting deeper and deeper into the forest because if they stay close to Ayodhya, then everybody will come and they will ask Rama to come back. So they wanted to avoid this. The journey continues. They are getting deeper. As they go deeper and deeper into the forest, they meet many sages. Lot of hermitages they visit. And all the hermitages are beautifully decorated with the Agni Kundam, where the fire sacrifice is done, where the austerities are performed by many sages. But one thing Rama notices is that there is some sort of lack of pleasantness on the face of these sages. And Rama asks, what is the reason for this? You are in this beautiful, serene environment, yet I don't see that peace in you. What is troubling you? Then all the sages come together and say, look at this heap of bones here. These are the bones of the sages who were performing austerities, who have been killed and eaten away by the Rakshasas. And this is the 
condition for all of us. Every day we are worried who and which Rakshasa is going to come, who is going to take us away, who is going to kill us, and we are very worried. Oh Rama, you are our king. Whether you are in the forest or you are in the kingdom, it is your duty to protect us. So please offer your protection. We can use our power of penance and kill all of them just by opening our eyes. But we have taken a oath not to get angry during our austerities. So we are requesting you, please help us. Rama says, what a shame it is that you are asking for the protection. In fact, I should have known this. I should have realized it being a king. I am so sorry I made you ask me all this. But... I am going to defend you against these Rakshasas. Now see what is Sita's advice to Rama. Rama just saw the evidence of the bones that was shown by the sages and they said Rakshasas are doing this. They are being atrocious. Their atrocities cannot be tolerated. So Rama immediately promised them. Now Sita on the way back as they are reaching their cottage, is thinking in her mind, is, was this really required for Rama to do this? Now she openly teaches Rama about non-violence, the importance of non-violence. See, Rama, there are three failings for a man. One is not speaking the truth. But you will never do that because you are a Satya Sandha. You abide in truth. So there is no way you can tell anything that is not true. The second thing is seeking somebody else's wife, which is not possible with you because you are monogamous. You took the oath at my marriage that I am the only woman for you. Ekapatni vratasta. So there is no failing for you in the second one either. But the third one is what I am worried about. Being violent. Because why? They have not provoked you. None of the Rakshasas is provoking you. But you have already said you are going to defend the sages. Now why? How? Isn't it violent behavior? If you go after these people who have not provoked you to go with your bow and the arrow. Believe me, bow and the arrow, when a warrior holds it, it is like wood and the fire. He is itching to use it. I am very worried about this aspect of you because you are a Kshatriya, you are a warrior prince and I am sure you want to use it. But all this I am telling you because I love you very much. This third one somehow is bothering me a lot. Can you please take it easy and think about it? And she says, I am only telling you but I am not teaching you. Yat rochate tat kuru machirena. What you think is proper, because you know everything, but in out of my own concern I am telling you, but you please do whatever you feel that is right. Smaraye, I am reminding you what you already know. Thwam, you. Nashikshaye, I am not teaching you. Yat rochate, what you feel is appropriate, Tatkuru, do that. Ma Chirena, but quickly. Don't let this drag on for too long. So we see how openly, without fear, but yet in a very endearing way. Because he is older than her. See, even at home, when you tell somebody who is older than you, they get very upset. Oh, you are trying to tell me? I know it already. So she is very understanding of this very touchy situation. So she says, only in womanly waver, I am telling you this. But I am not teaching you. This is what we have to learn. Lot of times we raise our voice, hey, hey, like that. Especially if it is a little older than I am. Hey, what are you talking about? Don't you know I am the, you know, hierarchy wise, I am the person here who makes decision. So she says, yes, you are, but I am not telling you anything to do. Just think about it and see what is appropriate. So this is the greatest ahimsa paramo dharma. In the first value is non-violence. She is teaching non-violence here openly. And that shows 
how their communication was between them. And Rama says, oh, I know, my dear, only you are telling me because you love me so much and you are worried about me. I will do that. But I have already promised them, I know when the time is right, my arrow is going to do what it is meant to do. So you don't have to worry. But thank you for your concern. Oh, my dear, beautiful woman. So now they are into the deepest part of the Dandakaranya. 13 years have gone by beautifully with open communication, mutual adoration, harmony, peace, love, scenic, camping, great food, Lakshmana cooks, roots from the earth. Everything is beautiful, hermitages, sages. What is lacking? They are actually living more luxuriously than a king would do in a palace because he is constantly worried. Here nothing, everything is beautiful. Timely rains come, sunrise is beautiful. You don't have to take a vacation to see sunrise. He is right there. But turn of events start in the 14th year of their exile. There comes our well-known Shurpanaka. The entrance of Shurpanaka turns the story completely topsy-turvy overnight just like the exile happened overnight the story is completely changed she comes and she looks at rama and she is attracted captivated by his handsome figure and she says i want to marry you he says no i am taken already this one is mine and i'm married to see there that fellow is equally handsome and he's fair also. I am dark. <laughs> and if you marry me, you have to serve her. Why do you want to be in that situation? Right now, he's not with his wife. Don't, why don't you go there? Because you don't have to worry about anything. So she, as stupid as she is, Rakshasi, she goes. In Valmiki Ramayana, she does not change her dress. Like in our serials, we say, oh, she changes herself into a beautiful damsel and she goes there. None of that in the Valmiki Ramayana. She goes as crazy, as ugly as he is. In fact, Valmiki says, Surupa Kurupi. She's so beautiful, he is so beautiful, she is so ugly. <laughs> the whole Ramayana, if you read how he has explained Rama's beauty and Shurpanaka's ugliness, you will just enjoy that poetry and you don't want to close the book and go do anything because it is so entertaining. It is supposed to be Hasya Rasa. The, the poetry is full of Navarasas, all sentiments. This scene is Hasya Rasa. So then finally, she doesn't quit. So she has to be disfigured by Lakshmana and this is the another indication in front of Mother Sita, nobody dies. Shurpanaka is disfigured, but she is not killed. Tataka was killed. Sita was not there. Subahu was killed. Sita was not there. Khara, Dushana, they were all killed. Sita was not there. She was in a cave protected by Lakshmana. So this tells, in presence of Sita, nobody gives up their life. Nobody is killed. Non-violence again. And forgiveness. Everybody is forgiven by the greatness of Mother Sita. Now, she is disfigured and she cannot stand it anymore. She goes and complains to who? Her brother, Ravana. You stupid man. You are the Ravana, and you don't even know what is happening. Is it back now? Okay. You don't even know what is happening. Do you know what is happening? Your Kara, Dushana, Trishiras, they are all killed. The army is destroyed. But you know what? This fellow Rama. Do you know why I went? I went to bring that beautiful girl for you. She hides the real reason why she is disfigured. Don't you want to take revenge? for what has been done to me, so cruel they are. The two men, I tell you, just plan in such a way that you abduct her when they are not there and you make her your wife. 
Now, who can describe the beauty of Mother Sita than an enemy? If your well-wisher talks good about you, it's not a big deal. If my students come and say, oh, you teacher, you sing very well, you teach very well, what is there to be talked about? Some enemy who cannot stand me, yet cannot control, and is forced to, to say, that student of yours actually sang well, <laughs> has a lot of weight for that. So we are talking not what Kamba Ramayana says, Ayir Kangal Venum, Sita Vepar Kritke. No, thousand eyes are also not enough to see the beauty of Sita. We don't want that. Of course, Kamban is going to say that. Of course, Tulsi Dasji is going to say that. But Valmiki uses Shurpanaka to say this. I want you to listen to this poetry and enjoy. Few, there are so many verses. Time is not there. I'm already running late. So, let's see. Ta Sa so keshi so na so ro ko so ro pa cha yesh swini Sukeshi, one with lengthy hair dog, so beautiful. Sunasa, beautiful nose. You can't find that kind of a nose anywhere. Uruhu, her thighs are so shapely. Do you know Ravana? And Yashaswini, she is the most glorious in this world. With fine looks and she is the wife of Rama, who is good for nothing. Look what he did to me. And Devataiva Vanasthasya. In this forest, she is like a goddess Lakshmi. She is so beautiful. What are you doing here, sitting here? And all that beauty is out there by herself. Come on, start thinking. Then she doesn't stop there. Continues. Her color is molten gold, not just gold, that which shines so beautifully. Ratta, red colored, tunga manicured, nakhi nails. Every part she is explaining. And Shubha, she is auspicious. You know what her name is? Sita. Vara Roha, curvaceous hips. So beautiful her shape is. Vaidehi. She is the daughter of Videha, King Janaka. Tanu Madhyama. Tanu means the waist. Very slender. So beautiful. Look how she is enticing Ravana. How can he resist this type of beauty? Next she says, Naiva Devi Nagandharma Nayakshi Nachakin Nalvi Naiva Devi, I have never seen in my life on this face of earth somebody, not even Gandharva, these are all celestial damsels. No Gandharva can come near her, no Yakshi can come near her. No kinnari can come near her. That kind of beauty, maya, I, that kind of woman, nari, na drishtapurva. I have never seen anybody mahitale on this earth. Now you better think about it. Then she says, Yes, yes, Sita Bhavet Bharya Thank you. 
that man who gets her as his wife that man who wins her without fighting just she readily accepts and parishwajet when she gives an embrace that man sa sarveshu in this entire world even succeeding indra he will enjoy purandarata purandarat means devendra he is enjoying with all the damsels apsaras dancers gandharvas singing that is nothing compared to what sita can give you hey man go capture her kidnap her bring her make her your wife just do this one i tell you that is why i went look what happened to me okay now ravana is kama turanam na bhayam na lajja the subhashita says when you are lusty when you go after this desire to possess somebody else's wife you have no shame na bhayam you have no fear you are ready for anything so he seeks the help of maricha who finally agrees to become a golden deer and sita desires that and he drives rama away he deeper into the forest and he lets out a big cry ha sita ha lakshmana hearing that sita is afraid for rama's life and forces lakshmana to go and this is the ideal situation for rakshasa ravana to come and abduct mother sita so he comes and he stands at a distance and then he is looking at her from head to toe and he cannot believe what he is seeing he doesn't even think a human figure can be this beautiful and then he asks for arms this lakshmana rekha and fire wall is only in later retellings of ramayana in valmiki ramayana original ramayana there is no lakshmana rekha there is no fire wall ravana is invited to come into the cottage he is given a seat because he is the guest they cannot ill treat the guest she offers him water she offers him fruits and then she takes care of him all along looking into the expansive forest to see if rama and lakshmana are coming back and then this ravana enjoys her beauty and compliments her on her beauty she ignores and then she asks who are you you are so pretty you are so beautiful what are you doing all, all alone in this desolate forest why and then she tells everything she never withholds any information innocent not only strong but very innocent non suspecting how can she suspect a monk who is a brahmin who has come there she is unsuspecting of him and she says see my stepmother that this and all the entire story is narrated so we are here and i have sent lakshmana to bring rama and they are going to come then she asks who are you what are you doing in this forest what is your lineage you are a brahmin monk where is your family what are you doing here can you please tell me now ravana says ye na vitrasita loka that ravana the very name strikes fear in everybody and i am attracted to you oh devi please agree to be my wife you will live with great luxury leave this and whatever rama that you are talking about that human he is not going to come don't worry about him just come with me the enraged sita 
fires back at Ravana. She says, what are you thinking? I am devoted to my Rama. I am his loyal wife. Who is the greatest among men? You are a jackal. I am a lioness. You cannot have me. Thvam punar jambu kaha. Simhi mom. I am the lioness. Ichasi, you like me? You like to possess me? Sudurlabham, it is impossible. Adityasya, like the sun's prabhayatha, like the sun's radiance is how? Naham shakyatvaya sprashtum, you can't even touch. How can you touch the sun's radiance? You are seeking to pull the teeth out of a hungry, powerful lion. You are trying to swim across the sea with a heavy stone around your neck. You wish to violate Rama's wife? You know what you are doing? You are rubbing your eyes with a needle and you are licking a razor with your tongue. You are drinking the deadliest of poisons. Let me tell you something more. Yadantaram syandhanika samudrayo The difference between Rama and you is difference between ocean and the creek. Tadantaram dasharate stavai vacha. She doesn't stop. Yadantaram kanchana sisa lohayo. The difference between Rama and you is the difference between gold and lead. Yadantaram chandana vari pankayo. Difference between sandal infused water. And ditch water. Yadantaram hasti pidala yohomane. Between an elephant and a wild cat of forests. Tadantaram dasharathes the vivacha. That kind of imparity exists. You fool between you. And Rama, and you want to possess me? Do you think Ravana stops? He is so used to having his way all along, all his life, being the king. He has imprisoned so many women and kept them in his Lanka. So he abducts Sita. And then she says, you cannot touch me. Rama will come and he will save me. This body has no consciousness. You can do anything to this body. Even I don't like this body. This is not me. You can't have me. You cannot touch me. You stupid man. Understand, your death is near. You must be seeing golden trees. In the Swapna Shastra, in the dream Shastra, it is said, if somebody sees trees made out of gold, their death is near. She says, you must be seeing trees made out of gold. Your death is near and your Lanka is going to be destroyed. Just you wait and see. And with her presence of mind, even in that most difficult time, she imagines there are Vanaras sitting on a mountain top. She packs all her jewelry in her sari and drops it and requests the nature, oh, make them show this to Rama. Hopefully, hopefully Rama and Lakshmana will come to this area and then they will see and recognize that they belong to me. Then Ravana brings her to Lanka. He entices her with all kinds of opulence of his great golden palace and luxury and everything. Sita, just agree. Just accept. Why don't you just say yes to me? I will do anything. I will touch your feet. I have never said this to any woman, mind you. Even Mandodari doesn't hear this. But I am ready to serve your feet. I will never violate. I will never do anything against your wish. Oh Devi, oh beauty, please agree to be my queen. Just the queen of the entire lung. All my queens, even Mandodari will serve you. Who will leave this? Rama, forget about him. You think he's going to cross the ocean and come? Forget it. He's not going to come. He may even be dead already. What are you worried about? And then Sita, of course, does not agree. She says, I will never yield. I will never violate my love and my partnership with Rama. Then he gets very mad. He puts her in the Ashoka garden. And then he asks the Rakshasis, 
to torture her to torment her to force her to accept to marry ravana accordingly the rakshas is do the same thing one fine morning he cannot control his temptations to go and see sita even though she has been there for 10 months in the ashoka garden he had earlier given her one year now 10 months have gone by two more months left he says no i have to go i cannot control my temptation of even seeing her so he comes and she says sita what is your decision you come with me right now rama hasn't come right 10 months no he is going to come you honestly think so see i am here look at me ten heads beautiful come come with me oh my queen then she holds a piece of grass a blade of grass that what does this indicate you are not worth talking to me you are worse than this grass second is you are like this grass rama will come and burn it like this and it is not even dignified for me to be looking at you i tell you ravana surrender to rama his bhakta vatsala his sharanagata vatsala he will give you protection go say sorry and return me back to rama don't let yourself be killed and don't let lanka to be ruined i am telling you this is what will happen ravana could not take this anymore they all everybody is there entourage everybody is there everybody is watching bodyguards are sitting and she is talking like this and she says i am going to kill you right now and somebody holds his sword don't do that please then he say okay i'll give you two months if within the two month period if you don't agree to be my wife i will have my cooks cut you up into pieces and i will have it for breakfast at least that way i will have you then all these rakshasis come and say don't be so stubborn sita please marry him please say yes what is it to you if you don't agree forget before ravana kills you we will kill you and we will have you for our lunch and breakfast and dinner so this is the kind where sita is completely distraught because she is not able to tolerate this kind of violent behavior from ravana and also rakshasis this is the time she decides to kill herself she takes her long hair and puts it upon the branch of the shimshapa tree and she wants to commit suicide now the understanding is why is she deciding to commit suicide we say you cannot kill yourself this is against the dharma the character played a major role in her life she did she knew if in two months she doesn't agree there is no telling what ravana will do she might just forcefully drag her and enjoy her and that would be the end of her life and the end of her honor she wanted to sacrifice her life in order to protect her chastity her purity her honor so she decides to kill herself right there she says this beautiful young looking wonderful duta of rama hanuman who is watching everything and who is just thinking about how do i go down how do i make her believe that this is rama's duta not one of the rakshasas in disguise because these are all maya vis she might not believe me and then he starts singing rama's story then sita agrees and understands oh ho this must be the duta that rama has sent sure enough he comes down and gives the ring as the message of rama and he asks oh mother sita what will you give me to take to rama she gives the crest jewel and she says what is your message he says he say, she says please tell him that rama has to come within 2 months to save me if he does not come tell him he will never see me alive have him understand the seriousness of this situation and have him come then hanuman says what are you worried about amma mount on my back look i am capable of taking you let me take you why do you worry about this just come i'll take you and sita says no i have to honor my husband it is his duty to come and take me back 
why do i want to take away i can burn ravana myself with the penance of my power of my penance but i don't want to do that i want to give the honor to my husband to have that ability and show his prowess he is the king let him come it is not nice to do that hanuman i can come see she could have chosen the easier path to go and reach rama but her steadfast nature for the righteousness did not allow her to do this so she stays back then of course the lanka is burnt and news comes to sita oh hanuman is burning the lanka and then she prays to fire god shito bhava shito bhava hanumatah please if i have ever been loyal to my husband if my husband has ever been loyal to me make the tail of sita anjaneya uh, uh, which is set on fire to be very cold make his tail so cool that it will not hurt him and burn him sure enough that's what happens and hanuman wonders how come i am so cool and the tail has got the fire going all up there and then he realizes it must be the power of the penance of my mother sita and also rama and he prostrates to them in his mind then yuddha is done very last scene before the program ends today we started a little late i am watching the time so i will have enough time to explain this very important scene the incidents of agni pravesha the yuddha kanda has come to an end where ravana has been killed and rama sends message through hanuman tell sita that she is in a safe place now this place is as good as her place like ayodhya because i have won this place i have killed ravana she does not need to fear anybody now please tell her that i am sending this message and i am going to be reuniting with her give this beautiful news to my sita and assure her of her safety so hanuman comes amma this is what rama has asked me to give you the message she cannot even talk her tongue is tied she is overjoyed with the news that hanuman has brought she doesn't even know anything she remains silent and hanuman says amma i am giving you such a good news why are you keeping quiet say something and she says oh hanuman i am so happy you know what happens when you are so happy no words will come that is the situation that i am in right now all i want to say is drashtum ichami bhartaram i want to see my husband i desire to see him that is all please tell him that then hanuman says amma amma just one thing i want you to help me with hanuman your service has been so wonderful i was just wondering how can i repay you how can i show my appreciation for your kindness what do you want hanuman he says i want to kill these rakshasis because they have tortured you all along and they have put you through so much trouble can i kill them i'll bite somebody i will use my nails and poke into somebody i'll break their legs and i'll break their back i anyhow some of them have only one nose half a nose one eye and one year i'll make sure that they have none of this and i'll make chutney out of them there are so many verses where hanuman explains how he is going to kill them and hanuman uh, lakshma uh, sita says what an uncultured man you have become all along i thought you are a good man you are a duta of rama you have some culture in you and now you are coming and telling me you want to kill them by eating them by slicing them by making chutney out of them what kind of a person are you i have given them my protection already you cannot kill them what did they do after all they were following their king's orders the king asked them they are the his subordinates he asked them to torture me they tortured me what choice did they have they had to die otherwise no you cannot act like this understand be non violent forgive them forgive them and forgive them 
Now Hanuman says, All along I knew Rama was Sharanagata Vatsala, but Sita is measureless because Rama gave Sharanagati to only those who came and surrendered at his feet, whether it is Vibhishana or whether it is Sugriva or anyone. But Sita is giving refuge and protection to those who didn't even ask. What is Sharanagata Vatsale? He is, and he does the stuti of Sita in his appreciation, which is beautiful. It is called Janaki Stuti from the Skanda Purana by Hanumanji. There are eight verses. I will only sing four verses to say how beautifully he salutes Mother Sita. <laughs> Janaki Twam Namasyami Sarva Papa Pranashini Janaki Twam Namasyami Sarva Papa Pranashini Daritri Rena Sam Hartrim Bhakta Bhishta Dayanim Daritri Rena Sam Hartrim Bhakta Bhishta Dayini Videha Rajatanayam Rakhavananda Karini Videha Rajatanayam Rakhavananda Karini Rakhavananda Karini Rakhavananda Karini in light of the time, I changed the meter and I did only two verses. Here he says, I salute you, O Mother Sita. You have brought so much joy and you have shown your compassion, mercy on all beings. My salutations to you. Please accept my pranams. Now Sita is brought. In spite of she wanting to see Rama, just as she was, without taking bath, with the impure clothes that she already was there under the tree, Rama sends the message, I don't want to see her in that fashion. Tell her to take a bath and adorn herself with all ornaments and I want to see her like a queen entering. I want to see Sita all dressed up. He sends Vibhishana because the king has to go with respectful attitude and bring Queen Sita to Rama. And he says, Amma, it is Rajagnya ordered by Rama and you have to come take a bath with a fragrant sandalwood bath and all the ornaments. We all have everything ready. And she doesn't understand. Why do I have to all along I have stayed like this? Why do I have to see him with the taking a bath and ornaments and everything? So she says, Asnata Drashtumichami Bhartaram Rakshasadhipa. Oh Bhishana Rakshasadhipa. I want to see my husband without taking a bath, just as I am. But Vibhishana doesn't agree. Amma. It is king, not just your husband. He is our king also. Because he won Lanka for me. He has made me the king. We cannot do this. Please follow. I don't want to be in trouble with Rama. I am afraid. So please dress up and come. So she comes beautifully dressed, looking like Hiranmayim Lakshmim Bhajami, as Dikshitar says. And then Rama does not even care to look at her. She comes in the assembly, assembled by Vanaras and Rakshasas, making way, she gets down from the palanquin and she comes. She is overjoyed to see her husband after that much of time that has gone by. She says only one word, Aryaputra, oh my dear husband. She is so shy. She is in front of so many people and she is so much dressed and everything. She feels like she is dissolving within herself. She feels so much shy and she cannot even look at him because she is looking at her husband and everybody is looking and she just says Arya Putra and she puts her down. Rama says 
Sita, please don't think I won the battle against Ravana for your sake. I won this battle because as a king, I had to protect the word that I had given to all the rishis, that I will eliminate all the Rakshasas. Secondly, I did not do this for you because my kingdom, my dynasty, my ancestry should not put their head down in shame, saying that I was not capable of defending. Thirdly, you were held captive, so I have released you from the prison. Now, I have no desire to have you. You have been in the captivity under Ravana's care. So, there is a problem in accepting you who has lived under the care of Ravana for this long. So now all the ten directions are open for you. You may choose to go anywhere you want. And you can also choose Lakshmana if you want, Sugriva if you want, Vibhishana you want. Then finally, this is what you have to learn, to understand. You can say how harsh it is, right? Now you can come to the conclusion. Rama, what kind of a man he is, what kind of a husband? I'm sure you're all thinking that. Because this is what TV serials tell you to think. They force you to think Rama is bad. What Rama is saying is, Deepo Netra Turasyeva. You are that light which is so bright, brilliant, and the form and the embodiment of purity. I have the eye sore. I have an infection in my eye. I cannot stand to see you. Because your purity is troubling me because I made you wait for this long. I, as a king, I should have come and protected you immediately. But I could not do that. And I couldn't do it by myself because I had to seek the help of Vanaras and Vibhishana to come. I was under their kindness, their mercy. And I am so angry with you. You know why? Because if you had not asked for that golden deer, this would not have happened. So all of these things are going in Rama's mind. First, he is Harsha, happy, because he is seeing Sita. Secondly, he is Dainya. Hi I had to wait and get help because God's help was not there for me to get her immediately. The third is, why did she have to ask? She never asked for anything all 13 years. Suddenly she wanted this golden deer. Isn't that why I went? Isn't that when Ravana came and kidnapped her? All of these are coming together and bothering him. He says, with all this, I feel like I have an eye infection. When I have an eye infection, how can I see something so bright and so resplendent? Sita, you are that. I can't have you. Please go. I will just go back. Sita is very angry listening to these harsh words of Rama. She was never used to hearing such harsh words. Even though she understands what Rama is asking, he is asking her to prove her chastity and purity in front of the assembly so that she comes out looking beautiful. Just like Rama came out as a valor protecting her, he, he wanted her to also come out with a great vigor and great austerity and she understands that but it is on her choice rama never asked her to enter the fire there is no agni pariksha in the valmiki ramayana it is agni pravesha enters entering the fire not tested by the fire in all the ramayana retellings we hear agni pariksha test what test a person who is so pure, she prayed to Agni, Shito Bhava Hanumataha, Agni became cool. Do you think he is going to burn Sita? On what aspect fire can burn? She is fire against that fire. In fact, the Agni will burn with her penance power. So there is no Agni who is going to burn her. You see? So it is the question of her proving to the world where the stigma is there. Rama is accepting her who was in captivity. Rama did not want that blemish, that stigma, that apavada to go to Sita. 
he says no you prove you prove your purity sita and i am here for you i love you i have always loved you i have no doubt about your purity and yet to tell the world rama is harsh to me you know and to tell the world i don't care i will choose what i want to do she enters the fire on her own aada barad mate ke aaduve viragrani hin ma a taunting reply you should not be talking like this a person who has culture who has values should not be talking like an uncultured man you are showing no culture your words are so harsh what kind of a talking is that that you are doing she wipes her tears she gets more and more courageous and in front of everybody oh valiant trauma just because some woman you have in your mind who may have gone astray who may have deviated from the path of righteousness you think i am that don't you know who i am when that evil ravana was taking me do you know what i thought my weakness was only in the body but not in my mind all along i looked at this body as a piece of wood that he was carrying and i only thought of you to that kind of a woman you are talking like this aren't you ashamed is it fair for you to talk like this and it was not my willfulness that i went and got kidnapped it was a my purva niyojita it was ordained by the vidhi so i had to succumb to that if that were your case why didn't you send hanuman with the message that you are going to reject me why did you send him to look for me at that time had you told me through him that you are going to reject me i would have killed myself then itself you didn't need to fight you didn't need to put your friends through trouble you didn't need to build a bridge and cross the ocean what on earth did you do all that for and you are forgetting one thing my birth is not from the mother's womb like your birth is you came out of kausalya's womb where did i come from i came from the earth earth god is on my own account my birth is of divine origin you are not honoring me because you have become like a woman and with womanly nature you have become a victim of anger get rid of this now i am telling lakshmana hey lakshmana create a fire for me that is the only medicine for this kind of rejection by my husband because i don't want to live anymore i want to enter the fire and die and give up my life lakshmana is very scared and he looks at rama rama gives the signal start the fire because he knows fire cannot do anything and it was already in the plan both of them had understood each other what the intention was rama was not scared he knew what can fire do to my wife who herself is fire nothing can happen so she prostrates to rama and then she prostrates to all the great men surrounding there she enters the fire and then she said she doesn't say protect me if i have a character of a stellar nature if i have been steadfast with my personality may you announce to the world that i am chaste and i am pure if in my mind deed and thought have i deviated from the remembrance of rama and if i have violated any of his thoughts dharma then you announce to the world who i am and take me back to rama so he enters the fire agni brings her 
she is resplendent with all her jewelry and everything not a flower is wilted not an ornament has faded her red sari is even resplendent like gold with a red hue he brings her and then he says rama let me tell you she is pure she is chaste she is excellent she is transcendent transcendental in her character there is no match for her in this world please accept her and take her back to ayodhya and live happily so rama says i know agni deva no fire could touch her i know she is pure and i know why this drama had to be done because i didn't want people to think and say that i accepted sita without testing her this test was required not for me but for the rest of the world to see how chaste she is and then he accepts her and they go back to ayodhya and they live happily as king and queen and the later portion we are not going to talk about it these are the six cantos that we focus on in all the discourses we don't talk about the uttarakhanda uttarakhanda is a separate discourse that is given because it has lot of commentaries like i have given you today to gain an insight into what that banishment was for why he had he had to leave her and everything it has got a tremendous detail story from valmiki ramayana who everybody thinks is not written by valmiki but it is written by valmiki because he says i am prachetas i am the valmiki i am the 10th son of varuna i am bringing sita who is pure and you have to accept her so all that comes in the uttarakhanda we are not going to go about it now to sum it up sita's birth is from mother earth a divine origin she is ayonije that means not born from the womb she was raised by janaka with much love marriage to rama divine marriage symbolizing love and harmony exile to the forest she chose to accompany rama embraced a life of simplicity and austerity demonstrated her unwavering devotion and stood by rama through various challenges abduction by rama captivated by her beauty ravana deceived her and took her to his kingdom lanka despite her confinement in the ashoka garden in lanka sita maintained her purity and refused ravana's advances remaining loyal to rama and the rescue and reunion with the agni pravesham not agni pariksha we have already talked about her unshakable faith and her commitment to righteousness even in the face of adversity making her an inspiration to millions of us the wheel of the society last conclusion the wheel of the society requires a very stable hub womanhood of the country is that hub the inner strength the courage the commitment of the woman keeps the spokes which is the family in space in place and spokes are these families as a result the wheel rotates if the wheel the hub is not strong the spokes are not going to be in balance the wheel does not rotate this is the story of mother sita so the central message to take home is to understand and emulate her personality and character and we should imbibe these values placing the ideal before oneself is most important and it is by our character and integrity we are empowered and tulsi das ji's prayer we will chant and we conclude today's discourse the story of goddess sita continues to be cherished and revered serving as a timeless example of love devotion and righteousness and beyond उद्भव स्थिति संहार कारिणी उद्भव स्थिति संहार कारिणी क्लेश हारिणी सर्वश्रेयस्करी सीता नोहम राम वल्लभ
सीता माता की जय श्री रामचंद्र भगवान की जय रामदूत हनुमान की जय थैंक यू वेरी मच What I planned for today, I only went through.